It's a very important day today in South Africa as we speak about this issue, and I believe Parliament must take an active and a leadership role in this matter. The matter of the President and paying back the money will be dealt with on another day. I believe today, honorable members, we need to be able to lead the people of this country. That is what they ask us to do, and we must take a firm stance in what is a very difficult situation that faces our country, such as xenophobia. Over the past two weeks, honorable member, South Africa has again witnessed the wave of xenophobic attacks across our country, with media being dominated by heartbreaking images of fellow human beings being subjected to the most cruelest form of treatment. In fact, I recall an image I saw last week that really touched me, not only as a South African, but as a husband and a parent. It was the image of a mother and a father fleeing an angry mob, carrying their children to safety. My heart goes out to those foreign nationals. See, growing up in Soweto, we have seen the capability of humans to inflict violence on one another. I don't believe I've seen people being beaten. I've seen people being necklaced. I've seen their properties being destroyed. These images I shall never forget, and I pray that our children will never have to witness these images firsthand. Our humanity, Botobarona, is slipping away from us, and we cannot allow that. We cannot stand by as fellow human beings are tortured and murdered. We condemn all acts of violence against foreign nationals. I understand the frustrations being felt by the people of South Africa, especially young people who are unemployed, who struggle to access opportunities to improve their lives. Jobs are scarce. Our economy continues to exclude millions of South Africans. But to focus this anger and frustration on a small group of foreign nationals who have become unfairly vilified and victimized does not address the cause of that frustration. We must not turn xenophobia into a political football, but we must not shy away from the root causes of the problem either. The root of this problem lies in our inability to bring about economic growth and decrease the inequality that plagues our nation. Unemployment today stands at 36.1%. Two out of three of the people who are unemployed are young people. Many of these young people come from communities that are disadvantaged under apartheid and grew up without, and grew up without access to quality education. In every community I've been to, I've met young people and young women who share the same story of economic exclusion. It is in fact this hopelessness that at times results from unemployed that drives drug use at times and criminality in communities that sometimes underlies xenophobic attacks. Furthermore, honorable members, we are clear that our borders are porous. And it's fundamentally because the South African Defense Force is understaffed and under uh, uh, serviced due to a shortfall of 700 billion rands. But while these factors may in some ways help explain the situation, they cannot be used as an excuse to resorting to violence or criminality. There can be no justifications for human beings inflicting pain and suffering on other human beings. Instead of acknowledging these socioeconomic root causes of our tensions in our communities, there are people in powerful positions attempting to shift the blame or even condone the criminality and xenophobia. Leaders who make statements that in fact lead to these situations, whether they be royalty or politically connected, cannot be allowed to get away without the responsibility of their actions and the statements they make. <laughs> Therefore, honorable members, we must never forget that during the dark days of apartheid, African nations opened their borders to South Africans involved in the struggle for freedom. Yet we now vilify those who flee, flee persecution and oppression and make them scapegoats for the real rage we feel from economic exclusion. We need an immigration policy that recognizes that the rights of refugees and asylum seekers are based on our commitment to the International Convention on the Prevention of Rights of all migrant workers and members of their families. And we need to make sure that our borders are protected so that those who seek to make a life in our country can do so with the correct processes and procedures. But if we want to re really solve the root causes of xenophobia, we need to address the issue of unemployment, honorable members. We need to support the growth of small businesses and create jobs. Small business owners are key to growing our economy, but we need to make sure that they're given the support to do so. We need to make it easier for those with good ideas and ambition to get their enterprises off the ground. In order to succeed, 
Small businesses require capital to allow them to get off the ground and the skills needed to manage a small business. That's why, as the DA, we advocate for an establishment of a national venture capital fund to provide initial funding for startups and early businesses. Township uh, e economy must be revitalized, uh, 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 President. This will enable the people to get access to capital and to fund startup enterprises. We need to empower entrepreneurs to be able to put together business plans and budgets. And we can begin by teaching business skills in our schools. We must equip young people with basic knowledge of maths, accounting, and economics, and educate them on how they can maximize the power of collective buying. And ultimately, there needs to be a greater rollout for small business incubators, with entrepreneurs can access and share resources in a supportive environment and empower them through assisting them with the cost of training and advisory services. <laughs> We cannot allow people to brutalize others. Foreign business owners are not the enemy. Perhaps we need to direct, we need to ensure that the real enemy in our society is a culture of corruption that takes from the poor and gives to the rich. A, cu a culture that reserves opportunities for the elite and excludes everybody else. In fact, a culture where sometimes we leave dialogue as the last resort, not the first, when we want to engage issues. Speaker, if we don't work together to root out this culture, we stand a chance of ending, if we work together to root out this culture, we stand a chance of ending xenophobia and restoring humanity in our society. In 1994, President Mandela made a commitment that never and never again shall it be that this beautiful land will again experience oppression of one by another. Let us honor his memory by honoring that dream. Let's dare never forget. Let us remind ourselves on that, and therefore we cannot at any point ever perpetuate racism in any culture, in any society. We are all human beings. We are all Africans. I thank you very much.